Hey guys, this week we're going to be finishing up Animal Farm where we'll be taking a look at direct and indirect characterization, how that affects uh, this idea of um, a growth mindset. And we're going to be looking at more of that in just a minute, but we're looking at it through the eyes of Benjamin here. And throughout the book, Orwell uses direct characterization to give us ideas and information about Benjamin and his thoughts and his opinion and um, insight into his thinking process. And direct characterization means just that he directly tells us what Benjamin is thinking, um, directly describes him as far as attitude and mindset. And so I want you to take a look at this example right here where it says chapter one up over on the left. You'll have this already on your Google Doc sheet to take a look at. And so Benjamin was the oldest animal on the farm and the worst tempered. He seldom talked and when he did, it was usually to make some cynical remark. For instance, he would say that God had given him a tail to keep the flies off, but that he would sooner have no tail and no flies. Alone among the animals on the farm, he never laughed, and if asked why, he would say he saw nothing to laugh at. So we're getting direct pictures of Benjamin, his thoughts, his ideas, you know. So you're looking for adjectives here that describe Benjamin. So as you're going through these passages, you're going to be highlighting um, words that are are adjectives that are talking about his character. What do you gather about his character? Then you have the idea of what's called indirect characterization, where you he, the author's not coming out and telling you exactly what to think. He He's telling you in an indirect way so you can come to that conclusion on your own. So look here, we, we get this idea here. So you've got cynical, being described here as Benjamin, and then see if you can gather that in this example as well, this indirect characterization here in chapter three. Benjamin could read as well as any pig, but never exercised his faculty. So far as he knew, he said, there was nothing worth reading. So again, the author's not coming out and telling you Benjamin is cynical. He's showing you here through these actions. That's indirect characterization. So you're going to be looking for direct characterization here on your left and indirect characterization used by Orwell here on your right. Next, we're going to be also taking a look at Benjamin in terms of a growth mindset. A growth mindset is key factor in uh, success and happiness for a person. Can you grow? Can you change? Can you learn? And this is a skill that is not necessarily innate in us. This is a skill that we can learn. And, and so we're going to be taking a look at the fixed mindset of Benjamin and then what is a growth mindset. We've got a picture of a wise owl above there. So if you believe your, your talents can be developed and you're working through your to your goals and you're coming up with solutions and you want input from others to improve, that is the growth mindset. People who have basically lost all hope, they don't participate in politics, they believe everything is out of their control, that is a fixed mindset. So here, when you look at the fixed mindset would be, my vote doesn't matter. A growth mindset would be, yes, my vote does matter and it can make a difference. And then here, uh, fixed mindset, I don't like losing. And then here, I don't fear failure. So I'm rooting for my candidate, whether they win or not. So in other words, the political scene, you're, you're not stuck in this cycle of hopelessness. You're seeing that, you know, good things can happen and do happen with the growth mindset. So now we're going to be taking here Benjamin's fixed political mindset, and then we're going to be changing it to a growth mindset. How can we change his mind? So in other words, old Benjamin the donkey seemed quite unchanged since the rebellion. He did his work in the same slow, obstinate way as he had done in Jones's time, never shirking and never volunteering for extra work either. So we've got first off direct and indirect characterization here talking about the fact that he is unchanged, he's obstinate. So that's our direct characterization. And then indirect characterization, never volunteering for extra work either. So you're getting some more ideas about Benjamin. So how could you change this statement, his 
fixed mindset. What would it look like if he had a growth mindset? What would his thought pattern be? What would he be saying? What would the author be saying about him if Benjamin achieved that growth mindset? So that's what you're going to be doing for those three here. And the final piece of the growth mindset versus pick, fixed mindset is coming from famous people in, in history. You'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten quotes here. And they're from all eras of history, from uh, before Christ, uh, for Pericles, to Bernie Sanders at the last election. So there's all different range of political and historical figures talking either in a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. And your job, these, uh, uh, sorry, they'll go back. When you are on the slide, you're going to move the quotes the column where you think it belongs. Is this an example of what a growth mindset would be? Or is this an example of a fixed mindset? So you'll move those to the correct column. And then the last bit of the slides are just these quotes and the people who said them underneath, just to give you an idea of what this person looked like and the time and era in which they participated in history or, or political um, involvement. So it just gives you a general overview for that. So take a look this week at Benjamin, direct and indirect characterization and fixed versus growth mindset.